Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Helena. Welcome back to my channel, Helena's Astrophotography. So um, as you guys can see, we're not in the den today. Um, I'm going to be doing um, a tutorial for you guys of Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 6. So um, this is a software that I use to edit all of my astrophotography. If you haven't checked out my video on my astrophotography, make sure to check it out so you can see all of my photos that I've edited with this software. Um, Adobe actually do a really good student discount on the whole Photoshop package um, and it comes with all the apps um, I'll ever need and it's a year's uh, license. I'm thinking about getting that but right now Lightroom 6 does everything I need it to do. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into Lightroom um, and let me show you guys um, what I do. So this is a completely raw image um, that I've taken of the super blood wolf moon um, that will, that occurred back j in January this year. Um, so this is something that's come straight from my camera, it's not edited, it's not had anything done to it. And as you can see, again if you've watched my astrophotography video, it's quite different um, to a finished um, photograph. So down the side here um, we have these things called sliders um, or tabs or whatever you want to call them. They're under um, they're under these tabs um, and you click and you get your th sliders. Um, there's your basic slider, there's your tone and curve slider, there's your colour slider, there's your toning slider, there's your detail slider and there's your lens corrections um, and effects and camera calibration. Now the number of these, there's a very small number of these that I actually use and um, I don't use all of them um, so you guys don't have to worry um, about most of these but yeah. So to start off, we do. I don't normally start in library and then I do an import from over here. I'll import a photo as you can see, I've already imported this one. Then you click it and you click develop and then it will come straight into here where you can edit it in the develop um, side of things. So yeah, so here is your histogram showing um, where each slider is positioned um, and where things are, that gives you a nice overview. Um, I can do, a, a, you guys let me know whether you'd like a separate video on how to read a histogram because I'm more than happy to do that for you guys um, but I'm not going to include that in today's video. Um, you have loads of options um, down here but I'm, I'm just going to quickly run everything through um, with you guys. So here we have the basics tab. Um, so you do treatment colour, black and white. Um, I'm in colour, so it's pl pretty. most of it is pretty self-explanatory um, already. Uh, you guys will see the temperature, um, temperature slider. If you move it up, you can see the photo is getting warmer. Um, and if you move it down, you'll see that it's slowly getting colder. And you can, you can go to um, real huge extremes with this. Um, you can make your photos look really sci-fi, but they also look really fake at the same time. Um, so I like to keep mine in a nice, um, neutral, natural um, temperature, something that doesn't look um, too overwhelming. Uh, so the second slider we have is the tint tab. So as you can see, it's a it's pink on this side of the slider and green on this side of the slider. Again, pretty self-explanatory. If you push it up this way, it'll go pink. If you push it down this way, it'll slowly go green. Um, yeah, this is also a really cool thing, but a lot of um guy, a lot of things, guys, um here, you only have to tweak slightly. You really don't have to go to extremes to get the photograph that you're looking for. I mean, that obviously depends whether you want um bright blue moon um, to show your friends and family. It really depends what you're looking for. But normally, if you're just looking um for a neutral, natural looking photograph, then you won't have to do a lot. Um, obviously, dependent on the equipment you've got as well. Um, so here we have the tint, so I normally don't really do anything with the tint, I mean because it's a super blood wolf moon I'd normally ease towards the pink just slightly, um, obviously not the green because it's not the super um, green moon um, that I photographed. So now we're moving down to exposure, same prospect um, as your camera um, has, um, it's the amount of light um, that comes into the photo and um, you can adjust this so um, you can make this really 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 bright or really 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 dark let's see around here not too overwhelming um, contrast so this um, so if you're moving the contrast all the way down it's really 
um, blurry grey and grainy um, and if you move it all the way up you can see it's quite detailed it looks like it's been taken and um, you can see that it's been taken with a really high high ISO um, when you move the contrast all the way up I don't really like to see that graininess um, it depends what you're looking for but I'm going to put it around there <coughs> excuse me because um, that brings out um, these craters really nicely I quite like that um, highlights so any bright bits are gonna um, when you move highlights up are gonna show up um, they're gonna be dominant in the photo and then when you bring it all the way down they're gonna be less dominant in the photo so I don't want this um, top peak to be too overwhelming um, I want it to come down just like that shadows you're bringing out the darks in the photo that you wouldn't normally see um, or you're hiding them I think we're at roughly where it was um, is pretty good then next is whites so again bringing out the whites oh, bringing out the whites in the photo and then bringing out the darks in the photo this is bringing out the darks in the photo um, again I'm just showing you going straight up and straight down to show you um, two extremes that you can go to with this um, but normally you don't want to go to um, to the extremes with this. So the next thing is clarity um, of the photograph. So if I move my slider up, the image becomes really crisp. But um, as you can see, um, if I zoom in actually, um, you can see that it's really, really super grainy. Um, and I really don't want to bring out that grain um, as much as moving it up plus one um, clarity does. So I don't want to... Um, I don't want to move that all the way up, so I'm going to bring it down um, maybe to about there because I can adjust the green and the noise um, very soon. Um, so vibrance, again, if you're moving it up, you bring, it brings out um, the vibrance in the photo. It brings out the pinkness to the side. Um, I really don't want that because that's not natural. And then that's really interesting because that almost looks like the normal moon. Um, that's um, but that's not what I'm looking for because this is the super blood moon, um, super blood wolf moon. Sorry, so I'm gonna put it about there because we want these nice orangey red bits to pop out, and we don't want it looking like normal day to day moon. Saturation, <laughs> that's um, really over the top, but it's actually really cool, um, as well. So you can really see the red um, coming out at the bottom here. Um, and again, that's just going to look like the normal moon. That's actually a really cool. I quite like it like that. But like for a separate photo, not for this one. <laughs> um, so if you bring it... Yeah, maybe bring it there. Again, nothing too overwhelming. Um, okay, so the tonal curve. I still have a lot to learn um, about this tonal curve, so I'm not actually going to go over the um, graph with you guys. Um, I'm just going to go over, so again, um, watch the graph move, so if I'm bringing this up, it'll highlight the, the peak um, of the moon, and um, this curve in the graph will go up as well, and then if I bring it down to roughly where it was, the graph should straighten up again. Um, yes, yeah, so we don't want that to overwhelming. You don't really need to know how to use the graph, um, I suppose, for this. You can just use the sliders, but obviously I think if you want to um, be a little bit more accurate, I'd suggest using the graph. Um, and I use it for reference anyway, even though I don't know how to use it. Um, so I use it for reference. So lights, again, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to move that down actually a little bit because I thought this bit was a little bit too bright. Um, and darks, again, same as we were talking about before. I'm going to leave it there. Then shadows. Again, we've done, we've covered all of this, and um, but this is just with a graph. But we've covered all of this um, above. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so coloring is where you can bring out certain colors in your photo. So if you want certain bits, so wherever it looks um, slightly red, and um, when you're moving the slider up, it's going to bring. Um, when you're moving the slider down, sorry, it's going to make it um, make the places that come up red more red. 
and then when you're moving the slider up it's making the um, bits that um, are red less red so they're fading them to a light yellowy orange. Because this is the blood moon um, I am going to make it a little bit redder just to give out that nice effect. I'm not going to tamper with any of the other controls. Um, we now move on to noise. Now this gives you a really good idea of how noisy my photos are because they have to be at such a high ISO. Um, when I'm taking them, they're really noisy. You can um, reduce the noise. I quite like to do this, but then it gives this like, I call it like a watercolour effect. I don't know whether you guys agree, but I call it a watercolour effect. It gives it a sort of like um, effect of like the colours um, merging together, if you like, um, if that makes any sense. Um, I do like to reduce the noise slightly in my photos. Um, so as you can see, that's a little bit better. Um, but then obviously that compensates for the detail, so you might not get as much detail as you want um, if you're like, it's sort of like lowering the ISO, lowering the noise. Um, as you can see, I'm skipping a few things because um, there's a lot of things that I don't use here and a lot of things that I don't know how, how to use. So if you guys um, could t let me know um, certainly um, about this graph, then that would be awesome so we're scrolling all the way down so we were here noise reduction so detail obviously if you're bringing up it's gonna have more detail if you're going down it's gonna have less detail I think it looked fine uh, where it was yep I think it looks great like that smoothness again pretty self-explanatory if you're moving it up if you're moving the slider up it's gonna be it's gonna become more smooth and then if you move it down it's going to become grainy there's not actually a lot of difference um in that slider so i'm just going to leave it roughly about there um i'm actually now that i've made some adjustments i'm actually going to come up here and uh, reduce the noise even further because i feel like it needs that just that little bit more yeah that should do and then down here, lens corrections and effects I haven't got around to using yet in camera calibration. So um, I'm going to do some research on them and I will definitely get back to you guys um, about them. So yeah, this is roughly, um, not 100%, but this is roughly a finished photograph. So if you could come down here um, to the two buttons that they look like two Ys, um, if you click this, then you can see a before and after. So you can see what it looked like before you've edited it and what it looks like now um, with all the editing you've put into it. Um, and then this, actually sometimes when I do this, I sometimes find that I prefer um, the photo before it was edited. So I just keep the photo before it was edited um, and I just keep it like that. But I really, really like um, how it's turned out here. So if we go back to this box um, down here next to the two Ys and that will bring us back to where we were. Um, and then obviously you can um, export it. So I um, go file um, and then export. There's keyboard shortcuts, shortcuts on the side of tabs as well if you want to learn the keyboard shortcut, shortcuts. And I will name this um, Blood Moon. Uh, ooh, can't spell. Ed, uh, edited two because I've already done one and you can change where you want it to be um, saved to I've chosen my edited folder so that's where all my edited photos go it's really it's a really easy way to do um, it's really easy to like put one folder together for all your edited photos I find that um, really useful so then click export and then it does its thing and then it should export to your chosen file um, and then it should export to your chosen file. I really hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and found it informative. Um, this is my first um, how to edit video um, if you like um, so I can only get better from here. Um, so yeah, any suggestions for my editing videos, um, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want me to carry on doing editing videos, 
I find them certainly quite um, informative and, and intuitive when I'm watching them, um, when I'm watching other people do them. So um, I thought it's about time for um, that I produce my own one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next week we'll hopefully be back down in the den. It's super, super cloudy today. Really, really um, overcast. Um, I was hoping to get out tonight, but that's not going to be happening, unfortunately. Next weekend, the forecast is forecast is clear. So fingers crossed, I want to get a galaxy, a photograph of um, a galaxy next weekend. But you'll have to stay tuned to see um, if I manage to get that. Um, Make sure to give my Facebook page Helena's Astrophotography a like because um, again I will probably be making next week's upload but if I don't um, I'll make sure to let you guys know via that so it's called Helena's Astrophotography. I'll see you guys in the next video but until then happy starting.